Peterson, and I have been a mother for over 16 years, a little over 16 years. My oldest is 16. Oh my gosh, I, can't I know, it doesn't seem possible. Savannah used to be one of my babysitters when they were all younger. Yeah, when we first moved in. And I, uh, my youngest is four. So, um, and I have been a fitness instructor out of the YMCA for a little over 15 years and have taught just about everything under the moon. Some of it just a little bit, some of it long term. Uh, my biggest thing now is I've been teaching Pilates for, oh goodness, Johnny was a baby. So 10 years, 10, 11 years I've been teaching Pilates and stuff. And um, I will say that Pilates is probably the, the big, one of the biggest things that totally changed my body. And I'm not saying that so they all jump on the Pilates bandwagon, okay? Because I'm definitely all for, there is not one single thing that you can do, um, whether it be jumping on the bandwagon or sticking with it forever. There's not one thing that you can do that will make the biggest difference in your body. It's a lot of little things, and the biggest thing to remember is that it, it has to be a lifestyle change, which for me, Pilates helped me do that. It helped change some things about my body, that it's not just, um, hi, sweetheart, <laughs> hi, baby. Um, Pilates isn't just something I do 10 minutes a day, and okay, I've done it, it's a, a check off my list, and it changes my life. No, Pilates, I took some of the principles from Pilates, and I incorporated it in my life, and, and, and kept it that way, um, and it's something that you, you kind of have to do 24-7. It's just something, it, uh, and I'll get to them in just a minute, but some of the basic things are your breathing and your posture and, um, and, uh, and how you use the muscles in your body because we have hundreds and hundreds, I still look up the number, I'm not very good at remembering definite facts. We have so many muscles in our body, and there, there are hundreds and hundreds of muscles in our bodies, but we... Um, and when I say we, I mean like society, everybody. We're very guilty of not using a lot of them. We tend to ignore them. And I would say society as a whole has just kind of shifted to doing that. And one of the first things that I always see that in is our posture. Society as a whole has, accept, has gone to accepting poor posture. I mean, this is the norm. And I will say, anything I talk about, I am very guilty of myself, okay? I, I, I find myself with bad posture all the time. I will see a picture of myself and I'll be like, ooh, I was really kind of something over there. And, um, so, it, like I said, though, it's, it's something you have to always work at. It's something you have to incorporate into your lives. And um, I tell people, I'm going to get down on the floor. When I do things on the floor, if you want to jump down and join me, you're welcome to. Or you can just go home and work on these things. Or maybe even just see me talk about it. You, you know, you'll get the idea. But um, when I teach my classes, I don't do this every time, but sometimes I, I bring it up. Um, I tell people to sit up straight. And typically, not always, I'll turn this voice so you can be better. Typically, this is what I see. This is, this is good posture, which is not the worst. But if I were to, this is supposed to be a two-person exercise. But if I were to stand behind me and just take my leg, my straight line, take my leg and put it back behind me, this is what's going to happen is I'm going to sit up nice and really straight, okay? This is good posture. This is sitting up straight. And if I sit here long enough, my back's gonna start to hurt because I don't, I don't carry myself like this all the time, which maybe this is, maybe this is a little, if I were to say this, this is, I, maybe I should say this is perfect posture because I am sitting up the perfectly way that I should. Um, and I don't, nobody has perfect posture. Nobody does. Um, yes, try and work towards good posture, but you're not gonna have good, you're not gonna have perfect posture. But anyways, if I sit here long enough though, my back's gonna begin to hurt because I'm using muscles that I don't normally use. And so I usually tell my class, okay, now I want you to relax. And people will go like, oh, this feels so good. Oh, that's such a relief. And this is not good. Okay, so in some way you have to find that happy medium, okay? Just try and sit up a little bit straighter. You're not gonna have this perfect posture all the time walking around like this, because it's, it's, well, you can try, but have fun. But, but, don't, but don't give in to, well this is what society says is okay, so this is what I'm gonna stick with. Just try and move it up a little bit and just have good posture. So that's one thing that you can incorporate in. And, and just do little checks throughout the day because Sometimes I'm doing really good, but at the end of the day, when I'm really tired, um, I'm on the computer, 
um, I'll realize, oh yeah, I am, I'm tired, I need to sit up, whether I sit up straight in the chair, um, or um, sit up on the edge of my seat or something like that. So the other thing that is a very common every day that I am sure all of you do is breathe. And when I teach my classes, I tell them all the time, breathe. I say it almost, and I would say, I should count some time. I would say on an average, I say at least a dozen times throughout my class, breathe. Because one, uh, a very common mistake that people do is that we hold our breath when we shouldn't. Um, I'm, I'm not even sure when you ever really should hold your breath, unless maybe you're underwater or something like that. That might be a good time to hold your breath. But, um, but when, when we're doing our everyday things, um, we tend to hold our breath, and not that it's a really bad thing, but keeping that breath flowing is good for you, and you're, and you're using those, when you're doing it properly, and you're using the proper muscles to breathe, then you're getting, you're, you're kind of getting a whole body workout at the same time. We don't think of breathing as a body workout, but it is. You're using lots of little muscles, and um, so whether you're, because sometimes, I even, I do it all the time too, I'll be like, do this I'll be standing there, and I'll realize, oh, can't okay, breathe. Okay, and I was just standing there holding my breath. I don't know what I was thinking about or what I was, you know, other than doing the dishes, I don't know what I was doing, but, um, but breathing. But I want everyone to take a really good, deep breath. Let it out. Okay. One of the most common mistakes that I see, and like I said, everybody does this, more or less, but a lot of times, when, which you guys weren't really quite as bad, sometimes I see it really, really bad. A lot of times when people breathe, um, I actually call it lazy breathing in that we only use our lungs, okay? Which you're supposed to use your lungs, I understand that, that's how our body works, but that's kind of the only thing you're using. So when you take a deep breath, you get the But that's lazy breathing, that's only using this right here, using those lungs. When we have a whole other area, a whole section of muscles that we can be using, which one of those, the most common thing you typically hear about is your diaphragm and using your diaphragm in there um, to breathe. And that's, that's one of the muscles, but there are so many um, inner core muscles. Okay, there's two layers of muscles. Okay, you've got your transverse abdominis and your extra abdominis. I forgot what the names. Um, two layers of muscle, okay? Your top layer, that's like your six pack, okay? Which I don't have one. <laughs> Actually, I, I've said lately, I have a six pack. I my, my children because I have six. I uh, that's my six pack, man. I got me a six pack. I'm sticking with it. Um, so, and that's what you're gonna get when you do like crunches and sit ups and and those those are good and that is healthy. But that's you see some people you can have a six pack, but they have really bad posture and really just blah, you know. Um, so there's a whole other layer of muscles that we need to work and that we need to use. So uh, um, you wanna focus on using those, those inner core muscles. And I'm gonna lay down. To me, this is best um, when, I, when I initially teach the concept to people, I like to do it when I'm laying down. So you can, you can get it by sitting there. So if you wanna do this at home later. But, so if you lay on the floor and you do the same thing, and you say, take a good deep breath. A lot of times, this is what you see, deep breath. So I'm doing the lazy breathing. But I want you to um, take one hand and pretend that it's a foot of an elephant. And you're going to put it right down here in your pelvic area, okay? You still have to breathe, okay? But that elephant is crushing you, and so you have to use those, there's muscles way down in there, around your diaphragm or anything, you need to use those to breathe. So now breathe, really deep breaths, but you obviously can't move this. So you might some, see some people do this, they're still using their chest. But now the elephant's gonna take its other foot, and now it's gonna stand on your chest. So you have an, a two-ton elephant standing on you, and now it's, it's a survival thing. You have to breathe. You gotta get that breath moving with this elephant standing on you. So I want you to focus on breathing, but not moving any of this, any of your body. So bring it in, and take it out. Bring it in, and take it out. So you can still really get good deep breaths, and you're using those muscles that are way deep inside of you to get that breath moving. So when I talk about, um, 
a full body workout, which is something as simple and every day as breathing, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking, obviously we all know how to breathe. We can do that on our own. But using all the muscles in our body to be able to, or all the muscles that, in the, not in our body, but because we're not using our leg muscles or anything. But um, to, 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 to get your breathing done. And it's actually, I have personally found, um, your breathing is much more productive. Um, you're much more relaxed when you're doing that way. So even though I call it lazy breathing, when you do it a bunch, when you're all huffing, it's like that really is a lot of work because you're like you're using this whole all these extra this that you don't even need and you're throwing yourself into it and it's just kind of, it kind of wears you out. Um, so if you if you do good breathing and use all these muscles, you're using muscles that are you're getting a workout at the same time. And honestly, when you incorporate that into your everyday life, then that's just something that your body gets used to. Something that people commonly ask me is, um, especially mommies is uh, how do I get rid of this pooch? Yes. This pooch, I've had this baby, me and my body are the same, which there's, there's kind of d different takes on it because some of it is, I, I do not hide, I have fat, okay? I've got me some little weight here that yes, I love to lose, but I'm not gonna do any work on it. But, um, but if, uh, quite honestly, if I were to tell you, um, I, actually, I'll put me back up. I love going to amusement parks and having them guess my weight they are always so wrong. They always, I say, oh, a short, it fit woman. Oh, she's gonna, she's gonna have a little. She's not gonna weigh very much, whatever. But what the scale says is, people, you're like, really, you weigh that much? <laughs> yeah. Uh, because pooch doesn't always necessarily have to do with fat. I mean, granted, once you've had kids. Okay, they ain't gonna go back. Okay, it just does things to your body. Sorry to burst your bubble wide. I got young you moms here. Know, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. No. She's yeah, you so look great. You look great. But uh, so when, um, who else was on the train of thought? Um, oh, so people ask me about my pooch and stuff. Or not my pooch, but how do I get rid of my pooch or whatever? And, and this again goes back to uh, what society has begun to accept. And so we accept bad posture and we tend to accept. Uh, I'll call it front posture. I've never thought of that before. But and I have to think about it. But I'm going to do it here. But you have. I have to just like let everything go. Okay. So I have, I have to think about it because it, again, it's something that I've changed in my body. And when I was in high school, nobody told me anything about this. I was skinny in high school. I didn't know it at the time. I look back at pictures now. I'm like, wow, it's so skinny. I didn't even know it. But nobody told me about using those muscles to hold yourself up and to work them all the time. So I had this, this is what I had. Not so much fat, but because I didn't have any children. <laughs> but this is what I had. And, and if, you, if, you, if you're a people watcher, just go to the mall or go to a basketball game and you see kids, this is what you see a lot of. Even if they're skinny, this is what you see a lot of. And, and you can tell a difference even in me when I walk around like this, and, and it kind of goes with the bad posture too. Um, whereas if I have to, eventually I have to bring it back up. So I'm like, okay, I'm not used to that. Maybe for a little bit I'll be like this, but it's natural because I have changed my life and changed my lifestyle to always be like this. It's work, it is. But once you get into that habit, that's when you make it into a lifestyle change and that's just simply who you are and how you carry yourself and everything else. So, when I compare myself to how I was in high school, how my body looked in high school compared to how it is now, even though I have a little more weight, I'm actually much more happy with my body now than I ever was in high school because I learned how to carry myself and I learned how to use all these muscles and not just be all schlumpy and whatever, even though I was skinnier back then. So um, a couple things, I can show you a couple exercises though because you do have muscle all the way down here. And I know for mommies it's especially tough because so there are a couple exercises you can do to help with this area in addition to just the regular good posture using these muscles and everything else so um, if you think about your body a lot of the parts of your body they intertwine okay you know your your glutes your rear comes up into your back and vice versa, and your legs come up into your pelvic area, and vice versa. So even though, um, say you're working your legs, you can actually work your lower abs at the same time. So one of the things I do, and these are you know, real simple things that you can do at home, 
if you want to sit on the <laughs> lay on the floor and watch TV. I, you know, I say this and I never do this at home myself, but <laughs> if you want to, when you're watching TV, lay down on the floor, but just take one leg and lift it straight up and take it around, kind of like to a half circle, depending on what foot you're using, like the capital letter D. And if you take your hands and put them down here, if you're doing it properly, you're going to feel these muscles moving. Because like I said, these, your pelvic muscles come down into your legs. So if you take it up and around, and you have to focus on doing it properly. Because if you don't do it properly, this is what you can do. Maybe up like this, like this, like this, like this. And I'm not even using this anymore. I'm using my legs. I'm just kind of whipping my legs around. That's the wrong way. Um, improper way, I shouldn't say wrong, it's the improper way. If you take it up and around, you're going to feel it right here. Now you are actually going to feel a burn in your leg. You're going to feel the burn right here, up here in these quads. But, and, and there's nothing wrong with getting a dual workout, so to speak. But if you want to work this, right here, when you can feel it working and powering that leg around, then you're targeting this area. You may not feel, oh, I feel the burn. Oh, I just, you know, you may not get that. But as long as you're using those muscles, then you're working the area. It's not always about a big bad burn, a big, you know, feeling the, the burn or sweating or, you know, doing all that. It can be, the Pilates is probably one of the most important things that I can do in my weekly, in my weekly workout. Um, I could not run. In fact, I just went through a spell. I didn't run for three weeks. I didn't, I didn't have any cardio whatsoever for three weeks. And I didn't, I didn't gain weight. I didn't. I was beginning to feel a little blah. But I didn't gain any weight. I didn't, you know, it's not always about the cardio. And uh, when it comes to every day, this is what you need to do. Because a lot of the stuff I incorporate into just living. You don't think about it. Don't put exercise in a box. Don't think of, oh, it's just 10 minutes of my day. As long as I do my 10 minutes, as long as I do my 100 crunches, I'll have the abs that I want. It doesn't matter what you do for the 10 days, for the 10 minutes, but for the other however many minutes there are in a day, you do nothing. You just wasted your time. Mm -hmm. So there's all these little things that you need to incorporate into your daily life and into a true lifestyle change. Um, because it doesn't matter whether it be a diet or an exercise plan, um, the latest craze, it, it, it doesn't matter. If you do not make it into a true lifestyle change, it's not going to make a difference. You can go three months on a diet plan or whatever else and lose tons of weight and blah, 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 whatever, but if you don't truly make it a lifestyle change, it's not going to make a difference. It may last for a while, but it's really not going to make a difference. Not and, and it can also be something that it may be something that works in your 20s. It may not work in your 30s. I know that from experience, okay? Because your body will change. And if you don't make it a true lifestyle change, then when, you're, when your body changes with your life, everything's just gonna go out the window. Now, how do you encourage someone to lose weight but in a healthy way? Um, you need to focus on whole, Nat natural food. Not only be natural and like, like you don't have to go down to cornucopia or it doesn't have to be super expensive. Um, it t can tend to be a little more expensive, just like butter. I have switched my family from, and, I'm, and I'm, this is just an example. I'm not saying that you have to do this. I don't pass judgment on people who don't. I stopped buying margarine. And margarine versus butter is, there's, there's a big price difference. Mm -hmm. Like a box, a four stick of, of margarine, you can get for 80, 90 cents, maybe a dollar tops. Whereas a four pack of butter, real butter, I get excited when I find it for 250. I'm like, yay, butter's on sale for 250. Let me buy 10 packages, you know, because a couple dollars more difference. So it makes a difference. But if you look, and, and one good rule of thumb when it comes to food, um, to look at the ingredient list, and the less ingredients, the better. When you have an ingredient list that's this long and it's a full of a bunch of words that you just don't even know how to pronounce, that's not, you know. And I know that can be tough. And I just told the, the last class, because she brought up the example of Hamburger Helper, I said, 
yes, I buy hamburger helper and serve it to my family. It's well, not you have a, a family of eight. Like, yes. So yeah, and there's different factors. There's the time to, to prep it. Sometimes I need something faster and easier, and um, and that's a, another thing as well. You can't just you're not going to walk out the store and be like, I'm changing everything. <laughs> just everything. I'm just I'm never buying processed foods again. Good luck. <laughs> Let me know how that works out. You have to find little steps in your lives, little areas in your lives, and what you feed yourself, and what you feed your children, and just focus on that first. You know, I have started with the butter, and then eventually I moved to, I stopped buying canned biscuits. I will only make my biscuits from scratch, which can be more time consuming, um, but it's one, if, number one, if I just don't even have it in my house, I have to prepare for it, or we just go without biscuits. There have been nights where I'm like, I just don't want to mess with this. So we're just not having biscuits. But um, so sometimes that's just this committing. I'm never going to buy canned biscuits again. Just not even going down that road. Now, with Rob, mm -hmm. he is anti butter, anti flour, anti sugar in the house mm -hmm. because flour and sugar and brown sugar I mean there's going to be baked goods soon. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want those in the house at all. So he won't buy them. Butter, I am very lucky to at least like, be like, oh, well, I need butter for this. Well, are you Whole butter is good for you, and though. And sometimes people give food a bad rap, uh -huh. like eggs you know? and yeah. steak. Even avocados. People are like, oh, oh avocados. Yeah. That's so full of fat, it's which really they are if you're going to sit down and eat a dozen avocados okay. a day. But I love avocado. Yeah. Oh, it's got it's so the, many good it's the fat. Yes, it's yeah. the good fat. And, and butter, really as, long as, it's whole, as long as it's whole butter, which if you look at the ingredient content, it's like milk, butter, milk, yeah. and you want to cut your sugars um, and your carbs out. salt, or yeah. So oh. focusing on whole, uh, unprocessed foods, that's good. Eggs are great. People well, give Rob's, it Rob's very, very good about that. But the thing he's terrible at is, because he works for the railroad, he, he sees all the negatives in the railroad. People will sit on the train, eat, sure. eat, eat, eat. Sure. But he will be like, oh, I ate a green bell pepper at noon, and here it is, 11.30 at night. Oh, it's like, yes. will you going to eat again? That's not. And that's not nursing. Right. And sometimes you get me to do that. Right, and actually, don't be afraid of calories either. Okay, don't. I have had people say, "I'm on this diet, and it's only like 500 calories a day." And I'm thinking, <laughs> "What are you doing? That is just don't do that. It's bad, bad, bad." You actually, especially you nursing mothers, you need more calories than you realize. And again, don't give calories a bad rap. You need it. Your body needs it to function and and to to live life, and and you need it. You do. You need your carbs. You need your proteins. You need. You do need your fats. Um, the the best thing I can encourage you to do is to find out um, what is good and what is not, and don't be fooled by what well, says diet on the box. It says zero calorie because some of those diet foods that are zero calories, you know, whatever diet that's all of it. Look at the ingredient content though. It's long of ingredients and. The chemicals and stuff that you can't even pronounce, and you're just wasting your time. You're wasting your time. So the, one of the best things to do is to research, um, and don't believe necessarily what you see on TV and or what a celebrity says or anything else. That because I, I kind of find those things myself as well. Even it's even changed as my as my life has gone on as to what was good, what's what's not good. This new uh, study about this or that um, and tailoring it to yourself and to your family because what works for one person is not going to work for another person so and, and, and like and like I said earlier even the same with your life I am finding this I'm only in my mid-30s but my body's doing some changes and stuff probably getting ready for the big change but <laughs> it's just like okay what I did 10 15 years ago that's that's not working anymore so it's, it's a constant, it's a constant process and um, educating yourself and, and then in, in terms of the everyday with the posture, the breathing, um, all these little things that you can incorporate into your life. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing, you know, I'll, I will use like Zumba for example because that's, that's been, it's really fun and it's really great. For some people it does wonderful things. For some people maybe not, but you know, 20 years from now they'll be like, no, it has to be Zumba because maybe not going to be what's right, right. for your body. Right. So just keeping that, just living your life for you. And that's one of the things you have to take it back to. 
this is about you. Yes, you have, it affects your families. It'll affect your, your children as they get older, because having older children, I'll be like, ugh, I see where my habits and thinking can, you know, play off of my children's stuff. But taking it one day at a time and taking it back to yourself. Always back to yourself. Don't worry about your neighbor. Don't worry about your mother or your sister. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. But just keeping it true to yourself and the changes that you can make in your life. And when you, when you bring it back to that, and that's a struggle. I know that. It's, it's, it can be a really, really big struggle. But taking it back to that uh, can make a difference in your outlook and, and how you proceed and and just process everything. So, any, any other questions or anything? I can, what else did I show them? Yeah. How, how many of, uh, like, tell me, so stretch your tummy, like um, push up, sit up, mm -hmm. you know, all those kind of to flatten your tummy. How sure. many of feet each you can do in a in a I mean, like a week or a right. day? Or well, you should. Exercise. Okay, you should. Or fit this. There is no magic number. Number one, I may do fifty sit ups a day, but you may have to do a hundred. There, there is no magic number that this is what you should do. You should, uh, when you work your muscles, you should give your body a break. If you were doing crunches every single day, when you work those muscles, you are breaking them down, which then makes them stronger. But when you do it every day and you're not giving your body any rest, your muscles don't have any time to repair themselves and make themselves stronger. So when they say lifting weights, you don't lift weights every single day. That's not healthy. For your your body and your and you're going to see less progress that way. I know it doesn't make sense. Do more every day, but see less progress. But you have to give your body a break. Okay. I know people have this conception that I work out all the time, but I really don't. <laughs> I take breaks. I take days off. I rest my body, and that is one of the most important things in building myself up is giving my body a, a break, and more than just popping into bed well, for six to eight hours a night. Also, a misconception. Mariah Carey, she had twins. This is what my body looks like after four months after my babies. I'm like, sure. You're paid yeah. to look good. Right. You yes, know? yes. You not just got all the help in the world. Yes. Too. You have a personal day mm -hmm. trainer. Yeah. Exactly. A personal chef, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and always using those muscles. And what I what I tend to tell people is the, the term I use is belly button to spine. And if you could, if you put your hand behind in the small of your back, if you can imagine grabbing your belly button from the inside and pulling it in. That's one way to think about, because that's the opposite of this, okay? Is you're, oh, you're always keeping, and you just have to train yourself to always have that, always have that going on, lifestyle change. Um, and another thing I tell people is that when you, if you're laying on the floor, gravity is working against number one, because everything just comes down, okay? But I tell my classes to, um, do you have a Barbie belly? You know Barbie? She's got that nice little concave belly. I'd be like, yeah, I'm never going to have that. I never have and I never will. But it's, it's, it's an internal, it's a mental thing, okay? Think of that belly button again. If you could reach in and grab that belly button and pull it up, internally, I've got my Barbie belly going on. Because I'm using those ab muscles and I've got them pulled in nice and tight. And you, just, you have to think about it. You have to change your body and change your mind this is how I'm going to carry my body. And, and it, it's a long process. And again, some people can get it sooner rather than later. I, to me, the younger you are, the more you need to start it now because everything goes south. As you get, 30, as as you get older, <laughs> every day you get older, everything just goes south. And now on the flip side. She's more like 25. <laughs> <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> on the flip side. I told my younger friend 